now, Second City this week. Thank you for indulging. You know, I'm a big fan of that 70s show. I was kind of hoping you'd call us all dumbasses before the evening's through. Yeah. All right. I can practically guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Apple co-founder Steve Jobs passed away this week at age 56. Republicans were quick to blame the loss of Jobs on Obama. <laughs> Fox News predicted that had Chris Christie remained in the presidential race, he would have crippled Mitt Romney. To be fair, any candidate could be crippled by Chris Christie. <laughs> Herman Cain became the third presidential candidate to meet Donald Trump. During their brief encounter, Trump asked probing questions such as, if you're here, who's driving my limo? <laughs> Eric Cantor has suggested the occupying protests on Wall Street are growing mobs trying to divide the country. I suggest Cantor, a Tea Party advocate, pick up a dictionary and look up the word irony. The U.S. Navy has debuted a new cargo ship, which is essentially a gigantic hull completely empty on the inside. The first ship will be christened the USS Romney. <laughs> Steve Jobs' death tempered the introduction of the iPhone 4S, but didn't diminish his many innovations. Indeed, were it not for Jobs' genius, our everyday lives would be very different. <laughs> Send a special delivery letter. We should hear back within the month. Hey, guys, I've been up for 48 hours straight, and I've edited 12 minutes of film. <laughs> I just went to the library to do some research on Sarah Palin and Rick Perry, but both of their books were out. Aww. Good news, though. They said that they're due back next week. Yay! That's very lucky. That's great. Guys, we can play whatever music we want with this. Wait a minute, how do you fit records into that? Otis, Miss Clawson is here in our mess tent today to brief you on the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Ma'am? Washington encourages you to feel comfortable disclosing your sexual preference or lifestyle choices to your fellow soldiers. I'm gay! <laughs> okay, okay, now you don't have to do it now. <laughs> Thank you, Private Miller. Uh, I hope you feel more comfortable. I do, sir. Me too. I like having sex with males, and I've been battling it for years now. But now that the American military thinks that it's okay, I kind of feel better about myself. Wow, it's really amazing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Um, I like anal. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a guy or a girl. She can use a toy. Wow. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I think what you're what you're trying to trying to say is that you're bisexual. Yeah. Um. Trying to say that I like anal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, come on, move this along. We gotta control the no way I like it when a girl punches me in the throat. Okay, that is irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel better after saying it. I've been holding it in for far too long. I like to punch guys in the throat, having sex or not. <laughs> Sir! Hearing that Jules likes to punch guys in the throat, and that Harris likes to be punched in the throat. I feel like I appreciate them more as human beings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, from now on, let's keep the talent to the disclosure of sexual impulses and identity. Um, since we're uh, expressing sexual identity. Uh, yes, go ahead. Colonel, sometimes when I'm having doggy style with my wife, I think of you. <laughs> I think I'm gay. <laughs> Sir, that has just given me a gay erection. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, now stop it. I am putting this issue to bed. Ooh. I said stop. All right, now we've dealt with this. The ban is over. Any more questions on the issue? Ma'am, are you single? Where are the
Where's the male G-spot? What is a donkey punch? <laughs> I'm not doing this anymore. Do not touch me. So I think, I think Colonel Thompson is just a little, a little sensitive, you know, with the with the new rules. Um, to to answer your question, Private Andrews, um, when when someone is going down on you and you're just about to ejaculate. Oh. Oh. Notorious Boston mob boss James Whitey Bulger, who is wanted by the FBI for 19 murders, was captured last week, ending a 16-year manhunt. The criminal was finally taken off the FBI's most wanted list after it was discovered he had been hiding out in Santa Monica? We went to talk with the residents of Santa Monica to see if they were concerned with just how many criminals lived among them. Do you think that there's the potential of other mob bosses living here, maybe in hiding? Some were still speechless with shock, and others just misinformed. I mean, it, it, it might be more self-defense than murder. It was definitely murder. And so, since we don't know the whole details and the facts about what happened, it's really hearsay. It really isn't hearsay. They claim that they have this evidence, but in reality, what do they really have? They have a shit ton of evidence. We refuse to give up. We knew there was fear in the deep underbelly of this community. Do you feel like your community is still safe? Uh, yes, I do. I don't think so. Finally, the truth. Now to find out just how many other criminals were hiding out in the elderly community. Are you in the mob? No. Any drug rings, prostitution rings, anything like that? Not in the last 15 years. Narcotics, small trades, guns, <laughs> weapons, no. missiles? No. You know, this guy walking over here, who looks like he with the Santa Claus goatee, do you think it's a possibility that he may have been in narcotics, prostitution, Vegas gambling, hot wire tapping? Oh, everybody's got secrets. Since Whitey Bulger was portrayed by Jack Nicholson in The Departed, we decided to look for other well-known mob faces. Now, have you ever seen this man walking around? <laughs> Danny DeVito. No, that's not. It's Al Pacino, sir. Oh, okay. So as you can see, Santa Monica obviously has Julian. its... Julian. I think, I think we should walk the other way. Let's go yeah, turn around. Let's go go slow so they don't notice us. They're gaining on us, Julian. Come on, let's go. There's like Come a block of them. <laughs> so we here at Second City this week determined that whether it's a murderer or a senior citizen, sooner or later, someone's going to die. At Monday's Tea Party debate, Wolf Blitzer asked Ron Paul if society should let a man in a coma die because he doesn't have insurance prompting two audience members to yell, yeah. Here now to defend themselves, <laughs> emphatically, yeah, now. Yeah. 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 Now, fellas, your heart in support of killing a hypothetical comatose man is going to much media scrutiny as representing a scary, unempathetic Tea Party ideology. You're not actually enthusiastic about killing coma patients, are you? Yeah! <laughs> All right, you're doing the same thing that you did in the speech. I get that. But like, say it was your mother. Would you kill your uninsured, comatose mother? Yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> you kill your own mother. All right, okay, what if it was yeah. you? What if, what, if, what if you're uninsured and in a coma, and the doctors say in a day or so you'll wake up and be completely fine? Should the government then just let you die? Yeah! Definitely! <laughs> I'm a piece of shit! <laughs> Down, they had to use the blood of a thousand puppies. Kill the puppy! Yeah! <laughs> and, and the money saved by letting you die would go straight to the pockets of the Taliban. What about that? Fuck it! As long as I die! <laughs> and, and, and then the Taliban immediately uses the money to develop a nuclear program. What then? Who cares? Yelling! <laughs>
two Golden Globe Awards. Critics say the fighter is riveting and a knockout. The Chicago Sun-Times calls the fighter as exciting as Rocky, as inspiring as Remember the Titans, and as intense as Goodfellas, but more satisfying than all three combined. It's as thought-provoking as Inception, but not as gay as Billy Elliot. <laughs> the fighter is as insightful as a Tracy Chapman fast cartoon and shot like The Office. It's as accurate as the opening sequence to Look Who's Talking, but that's where the comparison ends. It's sort of like that scene in Home Alone where the McAllisters load all of their kids in the car to do a head count, but Kevin is still asleep and they don't know it, and then a neighbor kid mischievously goes in the car, and then the sister accidentally counts the neighbor as Kevin, and then they leave for vacation, and Kevin wakes up and realizes that his family is gone and that he's home alone. Because <laughs> he was home. You get it? The fighter will leave you friends. It's as intense as a threesome but it doesn't feel as good as fellatio. <laughs> Christian Bale's performance will make you want to stand up and tell your parents you're bisexual. <laughs> the Fighter, now playing. We all know about Herman Cain's hit music video. Now, the Republican Party brings you the GOP's greatest hits of 2012, featuring candidates like Michelle Bachman, Here's a lady who's batshit crazy And she thinks that she can be the president She says minimum wage should go away Good luck paying rent Here's a gay man whose name is Marcus But he can counsel the gay ride out of you He'll use fear and Christianity Till you're straight through and through Romney. Waking up Mormon cause I'm Mitt Romney. I've got my wives at my side cause you know they want on me. Before I leave pray to Joe that I have a good day. And then I ask that my sons don't turn out gay. I'm talking about cutting down on the debt, debt. Old people I've never met, met. I don't give a shit. And this ballot by Tim Pawlenty. I think I'll go to D.C. I think I'll run for president. I think I'll start it over. Though no one knows my name. And out of Minnesota, I'm tired of the weather. I think I'll cut the deficit and Republicans will reign. Oh, yes, I think I'll go to D.C. Plus, a bonus Herman Cain track featuring yeah, yeah, Sarah yeah. Palin. Spreading pepperonis all on that ass. It's Herman Cain in this bitch. Yeah. I'm Herman Cain, motherfucker. I'm the deep dish king. Gonna fix the economy with my motherfucking bling. There were slaves way back in my family tree. Now I'm pouring Chris Dow at my tea party. It's Obama in his Escalade. Don't oppress us. I'm Sarah fucking Palin. I'm rolling a bus. Order the whole set right now. If you can't afford it, remember, it's Obama's fault. 